Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, let's pull up that screen. Oh, mighty Eilis. By powers of war, which are exceptionally strong, dishes fly in the box where they belong. That's no way to do the dishes. That's right. That's no way to do the dishes. You listen to mighty Isis. Looks like Alice has finally dealt with that toxic debt. They've been working on it, and uh, we're going to get into that. All right, so Mighty Alice has been doing a lot of work the last few days, uh, not only raising their revenue a ton, but also this newest article that came out all about how they're dealing with the toxic debt from GPL. And they put this on their Twitter today. Make that a little bigger to see. It says, Alice International, and a mergers and acquisitions company, as we all know, blah, blah, blah. It says, the company confirms the settlement of two of GPL Ventures LLC promissory notes, each to the value of a half million dollars. Alice also confirmed that it has received a further $5.6 million in funding from RB Capital Partners for its next phase of acquisitions, plural. It said on the 6th of April and the 28th of April in 2021, Alice issued two half a million dollar promissory notes to GPL to fund acquisitions and further business ac expansion. Alice is now pleased to confirm that both notes have been settled through an agreement reached between RBC Capital and GPLV. Including the settlement of the GPL notes, Alice has received $4.5 million in funding from RB Capital. The additional funding is being used by the company for further expansion, etc. It says Quality International has received $1.1 million in funding from RB Capital, which has been used for its first tranche payment for the in-progress in acquisition. All funding obtained by ILIS has and will continue to be documented in the company's disclosures. Nick Link said, We are pleased to confirm the removal of GPL debt as well as the funding we've received from RB Capital. With the good quality funding we have available to us, we remain in a very strong position to complete our short and medium-term objectives including the closing of our next phase of already agreed acquisitions, our reliable financing partners are fully supportive of our business and the ambition that we have. So I know that makes Nick Link happy. Those uh, promissory notes to GPL have kind of driven him crazy. He's been a little livid over them because I know they've uh, cashed in some shares that he did not want to wind up in the outstanding shares category. So I know that's bothered him. And I think getting this uh, taken care of is obviously a big relief for him. And RB Capital, I believe, isn't that that Brett Rosen uh, fella is uh, the owner of RB Capital. And now he and George Sharp don't get along so well. <laughs> I covered that, as you know. You know, Ed, if I thought you weren't my friend, I just don't think I could bear it. Yeah, yeah, I think they're cross with each other. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look and see what the stock is doing today. Really hadn't had much of an effect on it. It's still flat. It's down a couple of points. No big deal there. It's sitting in this little channel here, and it's been there for quite a few days. And like I said, I've just been adding down in this little channel. I'm pretty comfortable right here. And I know a lot of you are thinking, gosh, you know, they just came out with that big announcement of all that uh, revenue. And that's right here with the $19.6 million in the second quarter, which you can see is just a huge uh, inflow of revenue as they continue to make acquisitions. But remember, we don't have the net income from that number. So while that's a great number, 19.6, we need to see the net income. And if it's anywhere close to 15 to 20%, which is what they've been averaging, that'll be about three or $4 million. Now that should change the game a little bit for ILIS, because as you know, the market cap is $113 million. Well, if that uh, quarterly report comes in with a three or $4 million net income, all of a sudden, say so you multiply that times four, you're looking at a very low a forward PE, something down in value stock land under 15. So that would be pretty strong. Now, granted, forward PE is not as valuable to uh, investors as trailing PE because people like to see what the company's done and its past to try to figure out its future. But, you know, this is a penny stock and penny stocks are all about the future and what we think this thing can do. So. You know, if you're looking for a value stock in penny stock land, you're not going to find it, most likely. But this one could turn out to be one. And one thing, as you know, that's really holding this stock down are the shorts. 
and that's because there was 53 million shares added uh, to the outstanding shares, which they are using uh, towards uh, mergers and acquisitions. But again, the shorts loved seeing that 53 million added to the outstanding share. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, they love that kind of crap. And let's see where they stand right now. I mean, as you can see, this is ridiculous. It's almost 60% every day short volume. So it's really hard for this stock to do anything but to uh, go down just a little bit because more than half the shares of the volume are being sold through shorts, which is really, it's, te it's technically a sale but it's really not. We know how the shorts work. They have to buy that stock back and give it back to the rightful owners. So is it really a sale? Yeah, it, it serves its purpose as a sale and it helps push down the stock for them. But, you know, it's, I don't consider it a true sale. And that's why you get a lot of short squeezes from time to time. So like I said, I think Nick Link's pretty happy about this. You know, he seems to get along pretty well with Brett Rosen of RB Capital and getting rid of that GPL, uh, it was kind of toxic. He really didn't want to have anything to do with it as far as, you know, given GPL's uh, situation. So getting rid of that toxic debt obviously makes them feel pretty good. It's good that they've got a, a good source of funding so that they can make those uh, acquisitions and continue to build this company, the revenue, and hopefully the net income. And we should find out all about that on the 15th when we get the actual second quarter report. And I'm going to be all over that thing. All right, folks, and that's Mighty Eyeless today. Just thought I'd do an update since they did put out that fairly important uh, information today, getting rid of what I consider toxic debt. And uh, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's be able to continue to cover Mighty Eyeless. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I hope you did like the content. And we'll see you next time on Mr. Frugal Investor.